badass in a ball gown. Plus, this one thing could change everything. From the muse at the back door, story time with Shiloh Sophia. You are scraping meatloaf off the plates when it hits you. This could all be an illusion. The gravity of the idea is a punch in the gut. A plate falls from her hand, breaking in two. You stare at it as if it is an omen. The world you knew and the world unfolding before your eyes. Is it possible that reality isn't what is real? You knew. The world had changed, that there will be no new normal after this cycle of global warning. You told yourself the changes were for the good, that your best interest and in that of all beings is in the hands of those calling the shots. You tried to tell your children this. This is your home, so why do you feel caged? You have been feeling trapped here. You have been feeling trapped here. Where is here anyway? Here is home, right? This is where the people you love live. The dog that licks your feet is where your clothes hang and the mailbox bears your name. Here. This is where you wanted to live, gave every dollar you both ever had to live somewhere safe. Here. Where is here? Where is here? You've been drinking too much and you know it. Oh, well, for now, you pour a dram of your husband's whiskey and sit at the kitchen table. You wish for a cigarette, even though you don't smoke anymore. You turn the radio on low, and the woman's voice says harshly, Human beings are undergoing a mass experiment with technology. We are the subjects, but we don't even know it. Her voice is annoying. You turn it off. You already knew that, but something is different this time. This is when your heart leaps, as the sound of boots stomping on the back steps. The muse is at the back door, huge sunglasses in the plate glass clicking with the fingertip. Tap, tap, tap. You jump up to greet her. In the past you resisted, but not now. Now you know you need her strange medicine. You throw open the door. Where is she? You hear a car running, you can see hot, you can see headlights, you wave, she waves back. Hot damn, a date with the muse. You put on your husband's flannel shirt from the back of his chair. You pull on red cowgirl boots, you grab the whiskey, and you are gone, 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 gone from here. The door is open. The top is down. The muse is wearing sunglasses at night and red roses in her hair. Her black dress has white polka dots and red ribbons. Her dress is so big, it takes up half the car. She smells like jasmine. Your flannel shirt feels pedestrian, but it smells like him. It feels good on your skin. He will wonder where you are. You were just eating meatloaf with all of them, talking about the weather and flattening the curve and homework at home, and he was looking off somewhere in the distance, but where? And you wonder, maybe he is feeling caged too. The muse is driving fast. You put your seat back and exhale. Oh, everything feels like shards flying forth, broken plates, broken dreams, broken ideals, broken deals, fake news, sorry stories, statistics you can't trust. You think you can see the illusion as a giant projector telling stories for consumers of stuff, not citizens of Earth. Who can you trust? The wind is in your eyes and the tears squeeze out of your eyes, blowing back on your face and you start to sob. The muse turns up the radio to drown you out. Chris Isaac moans. Look at what a wicked game you played to make me feel this way. What a wicked thing to do. Make me dream of you and I don't want to fall in love. Don't want to fall in love. But you are. 
The stars are so bright and the sky with no other lights. In what seems like minutes, you are crossing the Golden Gate Bridge. The muse is racing down empty streets. San Francisco, the great lady, is sleeping. She is an orange Cheshire cat grinning. She has black lace stockings on the laundry line. She has twinkling lights and red doors. She has the smell of sourdough bread baking. Her backroom bars are shuttered. San Francisco is drinking alone tonight. But not you. You have the muse and you feel giddy, silly at the glee. The pleasure soaks you, feelings of reckless love. Driving through the city, you two sing at the top of your lungs to the Rolling Stones. I can't get no, 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 no. Can't get no satisfaction. But I try and I try and I try and I try and I try. So tired of trying. You're both laughing now and your laugh releases trapped ghosts and frees them to go to leave your lungs free for breathing. Her red rose petals leave a trail behind you on the empty streets. She drives to the beach, crossing the do not enter sign. She turns the headlights off. She keeps the heater on and you feel relaxed for the first time in weeks or is it months or years. You can hear the seals barking. You offer her the whiskey. She toasts to the sea, shouting, Skull! I don't know what I'm doing here, you say. Here, she ventures. Well, not here with you, but here in this life. Where is here, she says. That is what I want to know. Conversations with the muse are riddles, and you know that. Partway through, you can't figure out what you started with or why. She says, only you can define here for you. Only you can define here for you. It is a matter of where you are looking at. Out. At. It is a matter of where you are looking out from. It's a perspective thing. You reply, here from? You mean like looking out from inside my head or, or what? Have you heard of the poet Rumi? She asks. He says this, who looks out with my eyes? What is the soul? I cannot stop asking. You think you are getting it. Do you mean who is doing the looking? If not me, then who? She shakes her head a little, as if your share weren't quite what she was looking for. She gets out, kicks off her boots. We walk on the beach, saying nothing, feeling everything. She takes your hand. You can see her face in the moonlight, purple, black in the night, with a filtering of starlight. Her eyes go on forever and you are lost and found in her as if she were looking into your soul. Is the soul where here is, you ask, hopeful? Is the soul where here is? Your words feel clunky in her presence. She says, this one thing could change everything. This one thing could change everything. She says, leveling her gaze. You shudder at the words. Could one thing change everything? What is the one thing? The muse, she has glitter on her cleavage. In all her Britishness, there is a feminine grace that inspires you to bring your beauty forward. She is a badass in a ball gown. She stands strong, squaring her feet in the sand as if giving a speech to the world, using a seaweed bulb as a microphone. She says, your paradigm is being replaced with a different one. You don't get to choose it. You didn't choose the other one either. You only thought you did. False democracy. Only this time you know you didn't choose this one. They are rolling it out now in Boiled Frogville, if you will just sign on the dotted line. As you will see in time, it is an advantage to know what you did not choose and how this is better 
than thinking you chose. That kind of thinking is for sleepers. Am I asleep? You venture. You have one eye open, otherwise you could not see me. Does everyone have a muse? She looks at you as if you have lost your mind. Too exasperated to answer, she is ahead of you. When you catch up, she has a tirade ready for you. She says, every single being has creative capacity, has a way to see, to know, to feel, to be, to express. Many have forgotten me, and when I come to the door, they don't answer. They are afraid of what I might do if they don't answer. I can't come in where they are. If they don't answer, I can't come in where they are. Where are they, you ask? Not here, she says. Where is here, you want to know? Here is where you are looking out from within yourself, not looking at yourself from afar. You witness from within, not from without. You see with inside eyes, this one thing could change everything. You feel your energy unravel something, letting the awareness surround you that you could be looking out from within. You wonder how that is different than how you have been looking. A seagull cries and walks in front of you, she says, hello, Ralphie, you are up late. From her dress pocket, she pulls bread apart. Ralphie takes it greedily and waddles off down the beach. You feel so hungry for her bread. The two of you break bread together. The muse's bread tastes like San Francisco, smells at midnight when you walk by the boulangerie. The edge of the water looks like lace in the starlight. She is walking with her feet in the water. The waves are licking the edge of her black polka dot dress. The cold sand is joyful on your feet. With every step you feel, you are getting happier. When the muse comes to the back door, there may be fear or confusion at first. She brings a dose of the unknown. She bathes you in mystery. Then it is suddenly more, something radiant and shining in the night. You wonder how you will ever Bring this magic home into daylight. She takes the rose from her hair. She tosses the petals onto the foam. Red roses, the petals are carried off for the mermaids, she says. Seeing the petals on the ocean is one of the most beautiful things you can imagine seeing until you see her. She takes off her dress. Her ribbons fall to the sand, and then you see it. Her virgin de Guadalupe tattoo covering her entire back. Crescent moon, ray of sunshine, red roses, hands of prayer, belt of fertility, crown of stars. You are watching the naked, robust silhouette of the muse at the edge of the world with the Madonna at her back. She turns to you raising her voice over the waves. You have to go in to find out. You have to go in to get out. You've been looking from the outside in to wake up. You have to look from the inside out. When you can look out from the seat of your own soul, this is everything you want. When you can look out from the seat of your own soul, this is everything you want. Then it won't matter what regime or paradigm. You will know who you are and from here how to navigate. This is where here is found. This is where here is found. The here you've been looking for is found. You feel afraid. She dives in. Ralphie squawks. Seals bark. Waves crash. You don't want to go into the dark water. You want to follow her, but you hesitate. Rushing sounds fill your head. The ocean is inside of you now. And now you are finally here. Your husband wakes you up the next morning. 
You have a mean headache and you were on the couch and you were startled, still wearing the giant sunglasses of the muse. Looks like you had an all-nighter, he laughs a little. You just nod sheepishly. The dog is thumping his tail loudly and he is the one that knows where you go. I'll make coffee today. He walks into the kitchen barefoot. He feels the sand on the floor. Long ago, long ago before you married him, before your names were on the mailbox, before the kids and the bills and the outdated paradigms, you made one big request. You remember now what you asked him, that nights belong to you. You used to paint late, write late, stay up and fall asleep in the studio. And that was then. That was then. Your mother had warned you. Men fall in love with women who dance on the table. Then they want to make love to you on the table. And then they want to marry you. Then they want you to set the table with food. Then there is no more dancing on the table. Watch for this pattern. Never agree. <sighs> To your surprise, he had agreed and he had kept his word. He liked it that you were your own woman, but truth be told, you rarely stay up late at night anymore unless the muse comes to the back door. Last night's memory is flooding back. You giggle, letting the beauty rush into your house with you. The beauty rushes into your house with you. He is making coffee. He too is remembering your request. He has never forgotten. He wishes he could come with you, but he sees the wild in your eyes and knows you need time for you. This also gives him time for him. He too has a wild streak seeking expression, but where? He chooses not to ask. He hopes you will tell him, but you don't. The coffee tastes so good, and he is holding your He's holding your hand. I like it here with you, he offers. Where is here, you ask. Wherever you are, he says. Where am I, you say. You realize you speak with him the way the muse is with you in riddles. He says, what, wherever it is, I hope I'm with you. You say, I am with you. I am with you. You lean on his shoulder. His clean, wet hair smells so good. And to him, you smell like the night. It is Saturday. You have nowhere to be. You shower and put on a purple dress, an ancient bridesmaid's dress for a friend's wedding that isn't even your friend anymore. You put his shirt back on with it. It smells like the sea and breaking bread at midnight. A rose petal falls out of the pocket. You make tea. You go to the studio. You sit at a blank canvas, remembering, trying to see if you can see out from where you are. Can you be a witness of your own experience? Can you see out from your own soul? Will your soul speak to you in image and language, and sound, and sense. You paint the colors of the sea at midnight, cobalt blue, indigo, pale blue, crisp white. As you move the brush, you get lost. Time goes by quickly, and you are healing, mending the forgetting of many years, remembering the Madonna on her back, and understanding she is always with you. You make a vow to yourself to see yourself and your life from inside here. No more viewing yourself from afar or from the eyes of others. You title the painting, Here is Where I Am. Where I am is right here. Your children bring you a tuna fish sandwich for lunch on sourdough, and you smile. Mama, why are you wearing a fancy dress? Your daughter asks. 
Mama, can we paint with you? Your son asks. Yes, you can paint with me today. This is my painting dress. And they cheer. Yeah! Your daughter, she wants a painting dress too. If your son wants one, he isn't saying. Your husband smiles from the doorway. You wonder if he is seeing you being right here. For the first time in a long time, there is enough of you here to be where they are here at home. You choose home again. You choose them again. You choose you again. You choose the muse again. Later that day, your love, he comes to find all of you because you are too quiet. He sees you laying on the studio floor with sunglasses on in your purple ball gown with your children painting the dress. You are covered in painted leaves and flowers and fish and birds and bloopers and butterflies flying everywhere in every color. He asks laughing, uh, kids, what are you doing? Painting mommy, painting mommy, painting mommy. They say it as if it is the most natural thing in the whole world. You wink at him. He winks at you. He chooses all of you again. And the children, they choose you every day. This one thing could change everything. Amen.